Kevin Colbert and the Pittsburgh Steelers continue to make moves. They made even more moves on day two, addressing the offensive line, cornerback, and the defensive line. All in all, in a few day two moves of the day, of the tampering period here in NFL free agency. I'm Chris Carter here of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Joining me today will be Adam Bittner of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. We'll be talking about who they added, what's the importance of these moves, breaking down what it means for other players on the roster what it might mean for the Steelers' plans for the rest of free agency, and, of course, for the NFL draft. This is the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video. Hit the subscribe button to our YouTube channel to get all of our daily content. If you want to help out the show even further, go on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review with a positive comment. You do both at the same time. We'll give you a shout-out at the end of the show. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Again, I'm host Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter. Joining me today, recurring guest Adam Bittner from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. What's up, Adam? Not much. Just filling out brackets and uh, watching the signings roll in, Chris. It's pretty. It's a wild week. I love March Madness. I love filling out all the brackets. All right, all right quick question: Who you got to win it all right now? First draft, and you know things can change. We got time still. The first draft, I have Gonzaga. One Everybody's of these years, picking Gonzaga. One Why? Of these, one of these years, it's going to be their year. I feel like that's. I, I you know, I've probably done it the last three years with the same logic, but eventually I'm going to be right, and eventually, hopefully, I win like ten bucks. <laughs> hopefully, I win ten bucks. That's about the uh, the 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 gambling hope of a lot of people out there when they do these pools. Um, but, uh, but no, yeah, I, I, that, that's interesting, but I, I, I have a hard time picking. They lost to St. Mary's man. I ain't picking them to win nothing this year, uh, but we will see. Uh, the March madness always yields crazy results, but anyways, let's get to Steelers talk here. Um, they make, they make moves. I talked about James Daniels in a brief uh, two minute short that I put on the YouTube channel. Uh, just talking about the importance of the ad. He's a, he's a versatile former second round pick, by the Chicago Bears. He's 24 years old. He's looked like a good guard slash center. He played a year at center to start to start his time with the Bears. He's flipped between left guard and right guard. He's played a significant more time at guard. Um, and that has uh that's that's kind of become the place that a lot of people have expected him to, expected him to be. Uh, and that was the biggest move that ever that caught everyone's eye initially. Montrevious Adams was signed to a two-year deal for two and a half million dollars, but Adam. The, the interesting thing about James Daniels is that he was rated as like the fourth best offensive line, interior offensive line that you could have signed in this, in this free agency period. And he had, has a lot of upside being 24 years old with four years already under his belt as a starter in the NFL. And many bet many bears fans were expressing dismay, dismay that they couldn't bring him back in. Um, and again, all for a contract that looks extremely reasonable for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, it's a, you know, his contract is uh, three years, 26 and a half mil. And it came out that his, his first year cap hit for this upcoming season is under $4.2 million. This continues, this along with Chikumo Corfor's contract, that's only like a $4.3 million hit this next year. And uh, Mitchell Trubisky being only like, you know, being 14 years spread over $14 million spread over two years. The Steelers, seem like they're addressing a lot of positions of need with decent players, not superstars, but decent players or adequate signings for reasonable pay. And it seems like they're setting themselves up to do other things if they would want to. Yeah. I think my, my read, you know, so far is, is kind of that they're, they're trying to get some, a lot of different bites at the apple and, and, you know, this, the contracts are structured in such a way that, um, you, you can get some guys in here this year and you can kind of see what sticks. And, you know, if, if one or two of these guys doesn't work out, then, then some of these bigger, you know, total numbers that we're seeing, um, you know, the Steelers probably are not going to end up paying all of that out if, if things don't work out. Um, you know, so that's, that's kind of my takeaway is, is they're giving themselves options. They're not punting on 2022, um, you know, but they're not, they're not over committing 
um, to this year's team so that, you know, come next year, if, if there's a quarterback in the draft that they like, if there's, um, you know, someone else that they like, if they're drafting higher in the order, if they're not great in the coming year, um, you still have options to kind of do whatever you want. And, and you're really not locked into any of these guys that you're chasing in free agency this year. So I think it's a smart use of the, you know, this is Ben Roethlisberger's money that they're spending, right? And, and they're investing it in a bunch of different guys. They're bolstering the depth. They're going to have some competition on that offensive line. I think that's a good thing. I think if you can find two solid guys this year, um, you know, to add to that mix and maybe next year you add another guy, um, you know, then you're starting to cook with gas in terms of, of rebuilding this thing um, in time for another, you know, whether it's Mitch Trubisky, whether it's Mason Rudolph, whether it's someone who's in-house now or someone they're going to look to add next year, um, you have options. And I think that's the the, the best part of this offseason so far for the Steelers is, um, you know, they, they can, they can do things if they want next year, but you, you still can have hope that if, if things work out this year, they can be a competitive team. But this is what Kevin Colbert loves to do. And he's expressed this before and he's done it for years. When he goes into free agency, he tries to make it so that he, as best as he can, he doesn't always do it. I mean, there's definitely times that they go into the draft and they have obvious holes, but they try their best in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the free agency period to address each, each position so that they can go into the draft and say, you know what? There's not a gaping hole on this roster. So when our pick comes up, whether it's 20, whether it's 28, whether it's 31, whether it's, you know, 15, they can say, we can take the best player available or the player that best suits exactly what we need, what we're trying to become right now. And they're not locked into a position. And there's times they have been, you know, Artie Burns was a year. They really needed a cornerback. They were hoping it was William Jackson, the third, the Bengals took him right before they did. And they were like, mm, let's take a stab at Artie Burns. He, he tested well, you know, as far as combine and, and other numbers. And then it turned out he was a complete bus so they're trying to avoid that situation uh but james daniels to me isn't just a pick a pickup that's going to be a guy that's just a, a placeholder he's a guy that, that that's potentially a starter for the future of the offensive line uh, again you look at what they're trying to do in the offensive line they got chakuma core for back on monday they signed him to a three-year deal that's friendly early on and then pays him more if he continues to, to if, he, if he shows that he's worth those numbers later in his contract. So they got the offensive tackle situation pretty much solved with a core for Dan Moore, and they still have Zach Banner under contract if they want if they want to keep him. But James Daniels comes in, and this is a guy who's played all three interior offensive line positions. He's played center, he's played left guard, he's played right guard. Again, he's played the majority of his time at both the guard positions, more than more so than at center. But now this gives you an interesting lineup of guys that you can work with. We, I talked about Mason Cole being added yesterday. He's he's a he's a, he's a center slash guard as well, but he's more of a BJ Finney type. Uh, you know, a, I'd say a higher grade of a BJ Finney type that can you know float between those positions. And this kind of puts the pressure on. Like, okay, Kevin Dotson. And Kendrick Green, here's these two vets we brought in. You guys are going to have to show up and, and, and earn your spots. I think Kevin Dotson's spot's a little bit more solidified, but Kendrick Green's going to have to show that he grew over last season and this offseason to make sure he earns that center spot when there's two versatile guys they've just signed in free agency who could take it. Right, and, and I think that's that's the brilliant part of this is, is that you've, you've got veteran guys, so it's going to be – you're not going to have rookies in there competing, not guys that are – like – some of these guys are still younger, like Kendrick Green. You want to see them develop, but he's been through the league. Um, you know, hopefully he's, he gets a little work with his body in this off season, and um, you know he he knows what to expect now. And I think that's the that's the important thing with all these guys is um, you know none of them are new. Not all of them, you know, should be able to to step up. It's a question of who can do it best and, and who gives you the best chance to win. Um, and, and then you can look forward and say, who are the guys we want to keep from this group and who are the guys that we want to move on from? Um, and, and so you can make more confident choices and not just hold on to guys because, you know, in Kendrick Green's case, you invested a third round pick in him. Um, and, and compared to, to some other guys that you had in house, that's why you would want to keep him on the roster. But now you have some other options that if he doesn't live up to expectations, um, you know, and, and he's not living up to that third round. Um, you know, investment, then then you can move on and, and you can look at another position and, um, you know, we're looking at some other guys next year. So I, I really like that, that there's versatility, that you can move these guys around um, and that you can take, you know, you can look at a group of four or five guys and say, who are the best three for the interior? Um, you know, who are the best, uh, you know, 
well, yeah, two of the best three for the interior and, and, and draw from that group. And, and that's kind of why I like it is, is that you don't feel locked into anything. I agree with you. I think that Daniels is of a higher caliber. So you expect him to lock down one of those spots. Um, you know, but other than that, you still have versatility around him. And, and, and that's my favorite part. And it protects you a little bit more from falling into you need John LeGlue to be starting out the rest of your season because you got you suffered like one or two injuries. So they're trying to add depth there on top of talent that could be that could be legitimate starters who could change. And the other thing about this is that projecting like if the Steelers make no more moves right now, this entire offensive line is very young. Jakuma Core for is 24. James Daniels is 24. I think Kendrick Green's what, 23? Kevin Dotson will be 24 in that range. Dan Moore will be 23, 24 years old. These are all very young offensive linemen and when you get young guys like that and they start to go that gives you a potential for hey there's a lot of upside that they can come together grow together and find things that they can that they can pair along and you know keep at decent at, de at a decent rate you know as far as spending wise you know if you you got Kendrick if, if Kendrick Green works out you got him for two more years if he doesn't you find somebody else if Kevin Doxon wor works out you got him under contract a little bit Dan Moore Jr. you're hoping he can build James Daniels you just locked up for a pretty good price so that you know and, and same thing for Mason Cole. There's really good things that, that could come out of this, but I want to talk about another sign that, that they made. We'll talk about Montrevious Adams, but also Levi Wallace, the cornerback from the Buffalo Bills. We'll talk about that in just a second here. But first, we got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. It's the time of the year where people start to give up on their New Year's resolutions, but not you. You're sticking to them because you're going to help yourself eat right by getting a tasty treat that's also going to be healthy for you, and that tasty treat is Built Bar. Built Bar feels like cheating because you're actually going to enjoy eating these protein bars. And if you haven't tried the new Puffs flavors, they're going to help you even more because they're extremely tasty. They're the first ever protein-infused marshmallows. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar. They're a tasty treat covered in 100% real chocolate. And they come in several different flavors, whether it's cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, or banana cream pie. There's so many flavors of the Puffs to for you to try out. And then there's all different types of Built Bars themselves that, again, are covered in 100% real chocolate. And they're all low in calories calories but high in protein but that replaces your average candy bar because the the average built bar has 130 calories four grams of sugar four net carbs but 17 grams of protein compared to the average candy bar that has 240 calories 30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs it's a much better it's a much better treat it's healthy for you and it's going to help you with your protein and there's so many flavors for you to choose from, from coconut almond to peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, raspberry cookies and cream, salted caramel, and mint brownie. There's so many flavors. When you go to built.com, you can pick your favorite and have them delivered right to your door. But when you do, make sure you use the promo code LOCKED15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, that's LOCKED15 for 15% 15 off of your next order of Built Bars at built.com. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter here with Adam Bittner of the of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Adam, uh, the other you know the, the other two signings that the Steelers made uh, on uh, on Tuesday, defensive players. Now bringing back Montrevious Adams, two year, five million dollar deal, decent signing for a guy that they brought in for you know who was a practice squad fill in guy, did a decent job when they needed him to to fill in. You know an, an, another depth veteran defensive lineman they can put on they can put on the roster and say okay you know if to it's back they're they're kind of set at defensive line unless they want to get a top tier guy like Jordan Davis or Devonte Wyatt or one of those guys but another move by Kevin Colbert that's inexpensive really but helps solidify the roster but the move that everyone's talking about is Levi Wallace now Levi Wallace uh, a, a longer cornerback who played with the Buffalo Bills uh, he was an undrafted free agent who became a starter for the Bills really became their number two corner and when Tredavious White went down last year he stepped in at the number one cornerback position and he didn't do all that bad and, and he's not some superstar it's not he's not a CB1 he's not a guy that's like you know that's coming in like you know Steelers fans were hoping for JC Jackson or uh, Carlton Davis or Stephon Gilmore he's he's none of those guys but he is a solid CB2 that you can line up on the outside and say hey you know be you know be show your football IQ because that's one thing I think it's helped Levi Wallace get to where he is. He's not the fastest. He ran like a four six something in the in the forty yard dash when he came out into the NFL draft uh, the scouting combine. Part of why he was undrafted, but he's a smart football player who's learned how to make his value in the NFL. And he's a tough physical guy, a decent all around cornerback. What was your thoughts on them signing him? And does that preclude them from probably signing Akella Witherspoon, who a lot of Steelers fans thought would he was, was coming back? 
Yeah, see, it's, it's we were talking about this a little bit before we hopped on here. Is is you know what what do these late season you know um, runs that Akella Witherspoon, but also Adams, you know, went on? What are they worth? And and we saw that it was worth a lot for um, for Adams. Would it be worth the same for Witherspoon? I think that's the big question. Can he parlay that into a bigger deal somewhere else? If he can't, then then you know it's conceivable with with the cap space that's left that the the Steelers could still fit him in. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how that goes because we're we're coming to the end of day two here, and he doesn't have a deal. So that might suggest that that there's a possibility. Um, and then maybe you bring him in, and you have maybe between Cam Sutton and him, and um, you know Levi Walsh, you've got three guys who aren't amazing, but you have three solid guys to again put the, put in there, compete. Don't make any super long term commitments. So that you know, if if one guy works out, you you find a way to hold on to him, and if another doesn't, then then you move on. Um, so that's kind of how I'm looking at it. I'm also looking at you know, kind of forward to the draft and saying, you've solidified your depth. You know, you have you know some solid guys here, but maybe you can make a splash at one of these positions and say, all right, you know, we've done a lot of work on this offensive line in particular. Um, you know, if we love a, a guy on the offensive line, we can add someone to the mix, but maybe we don't feel that we have to. Um, and, and, and so maybe you can look on the defensive side of the ball and say, all right, let's make our big splash here. Let's make our big stand here. Um, obviously the, you know, the defensive line seems pretty set in terms of the names, but there's not a lot of youth there. Right. Um, right. The, and you, you gotta be looking toward the future a little bit. And, and so some of these bigger draft prospects you named could be intriguing for that reason, um, you know, you know, maybe they get a year with some depth around them before they can kind of step up and and, and start picking up, um, you know, the burden from some of those older guys, including Cam Hayward, because he's still playing well now. But who knows whether that'll be true in two or three? So, um, I kind of what you were talking about in the first segment. I like that it sets them up for the draft. It gives them options, um, and, you, and whoever's available at number twenty, they can kind of look at the board and say who. Who do we want to be here for a long time? Who's truly the best player available? Um, and and who do we think is has the best chance to be a, a part of this team for, you know, maybe 10 years or longer um, instead of we have to fill this need now? Um, and so I, it's particularly on the defensive side of the ball, I like the potential that they have to to make a big splash that gets everyone excited that maybe you went into this offseason not quite kind of expecting, but if – if it's the pick, you'll get real excited about it. Um, you know, by by the time we get to training camp in, in the in the fall. Now, here's another thing to, to look at here, Adam. And this again, back with Levi Wallace, I was looking at his numbers, uh, his, his coverage numbers when he took over. Now, Tre'Davious White, of course, is the was the star cornerback for the Bills. He went down after in, in week twelve, and and then uh, and then Levi Wallace kind of had to take over at the starting cornerback in week thirteen. Now. Wallace did a decent job when he was called upon um, and he was, I think he even was hurt himself for week 13, but uh, there were two games out of his, out of this final. I think it was eight games that he finished the season uh, starting without Tredavious white. And there were only two games that he really got truly picked on uh, when he, when, when you look at the numbers and there were only two touchdowns that he gave up in those situations. And those two games were against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers and Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas city chiefs. But you look at his games against the Panthers, against the Patriots, against the Falcons, the jets and the Patriots. Again, he kind of held his own. He even had an interception in there and a couple breakups. I, I think this is an interesting pickup because it allows, it allows the Steelers to say, Hey, you know what? You're going to line up on the outside, but I still think that they need one more cornerback. And maybe this is what you're talking about because there's been a lot of talk as far as maybe Andrew Booth Jr.'s uh, value falling. Jordan Reed, who works at ESPN, is, is one of their draft a a analysts, talked about this because he didn't get to go at the combine. He's not going to be able to go to his pro day. So now people are wondering, Andrew Booth Jr. used to be like a guy that people were considering in the top 10 as far as a cornerback pick. Now they're talking about him falling down to the later part of the first round. The Steelers usually don't get a shot at cornerbacks like that, the guys that had the pedigree originally of being one of the top in the class. 
this would kind of set you up for the opportunity to say, hey, let's go get that guy. And maybe he is your CB1 of the future um, if, if he's sitting there at, at 20. That's And again, that's a big if. Uh, but then there's still other guys out there. I think Stephon Gilmore's a- available, and there's other veterans you can sign. Akella Witherspoon still hasn't been signed. Didi King of Wallace said that that was that that was in the works and that was coming down the line, but nothing's happened yet. And now the signing of Levi Levi Wallace kind of challenges that as far as being a a lock for the future. But I, I truly think Adam, like you were saying, the position they're trying to put themselves in is, is protection all around. If if, if you get one more guy. Cam Sutton immediately goes back to the slot where he's re- where he's really he's really solid, but also is your guy that goes outside as soon as one of those guys hurts or has a bad game or starts to underperform, and then you still have Arthur Mallette who you signed to a cheap deal who can bump into the slot and kind of take over uh, for Sutton if he needs to go outside. I'm intrigued by that possibility, but I just I don't know if we're if this if we're done seeing the Steelers and Kevin Colbert make moves at the cornerback position. Yeah, and the thing I like about Wallace, and, and I think it's been difficult for the Steelers, is adding kind of size to, to the outside. You know, they tried to do it with Artie Burns, and it didn't work out. And, um, you know, guys have been a little, you know, undersized out there for for a little while. Um, and, and so he gives you a, a – a, he's a proven pedigree guy. You, you kind of know what you're getting. He's not going to be, um, you know, probably a superstar. But but you're adding the length, and, and so then it gives you more options what, what you put around him. Um, so – yeah, I think looking toward the draft, uh, maybe a first round guy if someone's solid there, but also maybe you know a second or third round pick you want to invest in, in a corner. Um, you know, someone who you know is is not a Justin Lane type. Who's um, <laughs> I was gonna say, Steeler Nation might be like, no, not another second or third round corner. What are you trying to do, Adam? Kill us? That's what we don't do. Like I, I know Steelers fans have gone through so much pain over the years, hoping for a cornerback to finally be it. And Cam Sutton is your one guy, third round guy. He's your one guy that's that's worked out. But when you look at Justin Lane, Curtis Brown, I think Cortez Allen was fifth round, so he's actually not that bad. But so Sanquez Goldston we never even played. I San Jose Goldstone is going to be the next name out of my mouth. Oh yeah, boy. I mean, it's it's just been rough. And then, of course, Artie Burns, who we talked about before. It's just been rough for Steelers. So I understand the trauma there. Now, I don't think that this means the Steelers are incapable of getting a corner. I, I just think, hey, it, there's been bad luck because one thing that's been done, there's been studies done to show, hey, everybody misses at cornerback when they when they when they're driving. Like, there's been plenty of first round corners drafted over the years that people forget about because they don't study these things a lot. They just they just keep an eye on the Steelers and they're like, we're so bad at this but then you look around and you see like an occasional hit like you look at the Dolphins oh they drafted Xavier Howard in the second round they're geniuses but how many other guys have they drafted that haven't worked I think that plays into it but to your point there's other options out there and like you were saying before as well the defensive line Cam Hayward and Stephon Tewitt are up there now. Hayward, especially, he's in his 30s, and, and Tewitt's now entering, enter, entering his 30s. You know, this, they're in their prime. They can still play for another few years together. But you want to get some youth that's going to be star power on the defensive front that can be part of the T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith movement that you still got going over the next five years or so. And that's where I think a lot of Steelers fans are really excited about a guy like Jordan Davis. Yeah, no, I'm I'm right there with you. I, I, I think um, it's easy to think about the here and now, but I think a luxury the Steelers have now without, um, you know, Ben Roethlisberger around is, is you're not just playing for this year anymore. You're able to do think a little more forward in terms of the entire team. Um, and, and so you want to make sure you have young guys stepping in, um, you know, pretty much at every level of the defense, right? Um, and have a, a couple of young guys up front, and then you've got – Obviously, you've done a lot of the investment at the skill positions on offense. So I just feel like defensive line is is kind of a natural place to look early in the draft, considering the signings that we've seen and considering, you know, where where that position group is on the age curve. And then you kind of take the pressure off whoever you do pick. If you do take someone in the first round or the second or the third, you take a little bit of pressure off of them. Um, to contribute immediately, they can kind of grow. I think that was part of the logic behind the Isaiah Loudermilk pick last year, and why they mm-hmm. were so, um, you know, aggressive about going and getting him. Um, this would just kind of be that at a higher level, right? So if if Isaiah Loudermilk is going to be that useful guy who's who's maybe a, a you know a B or C player, you get that A player who's in the same category, who's working toward the same progression, so that when you're moving on from Cam Hayward, you mm-hmm. have someone who's stepping in um, and and. So then you kind of have a nice little youth movement going where they're helping you now. They're bolstering your depth now. You can rotate a little bit. 
Um, and then over time, they're maturing into those positions where those older guys have been for so long. Absolutely. Now, I want to talk about other things that can happen for the Steelers right now because everyone's, you know, seeing these guys and like, okay, this is a solid piece, solid piece. You know, even James Daniels, who everyone's really excited about, these are pieces. They're not, but they're not stars. And people were hoping that the Steelers would sign some star power in the, in this offseason. That's not all the way out. I want to talk about the potential of, of those type of signings that may still happen, or maybe not, again, not a superstar, but a bigger name player who can be a major contributor next year and may change some of the dynamics on either offense or defense. We'll talk about that with Adam in just a second here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter here with Adam Bittner of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Um, now, Adam, part of this again, back to the, you know, everyone was talking about, and, and I entertained it on the show because it's fun to think about. You know, when when it when you know when everything's kind of up in the air, could they get J.C. Jackson? Could they get Carlton Davis, Bobby Wagner? You know, all these other guys that are that are that are flying around. That's fun to think about. But the reality is, is that they're going to sign a lot of these type of guys. It's just what the Steelers do. But in signing these types of guys they leave themselves the door open to make a bigger splash move eventually. It was what the Steelers did in 2017 when they were making moves all season long. And then Joe Hayden became available right, right. You know, in the middle of training camp and they said, Oh, thank you. And that was, and everyone was like, Oh, Joe Hayden. That's a great, that, that, that's a great ad. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen because that's, you know, a, a, it's a once in a decade type of thing for the Steelers when it comes to ad, making an, an ad like that. But, you're seeing other guys get thrown into the free agency market. Bobby Wagner still hasn't been signed. Um, and then, you know, the, the, and then Tyron Matthew, who still hasn't been signed, an, another another safety out there. And there's a lot of Steelers, Steelers fans waiting for this. And you even saw former Steelers linebacker Terrence Garvin uh, tweeting out the Steelers trying to land the, he said bagger, but he meant the badger. Um, you know, of course, the honey badger for Tyron Matthew. Now, I'm not saying that these moves are realistic, but this is, again, where – I think Kevin Colbert's trying to position himself because the, the Steelers have done all those signings. And I may be incorrect here. I'm going off of spot rack to something I pulled up literally during the show. According to spot rack, I believe they're saying that the estimated cap space the Steelers have left is about 7.1 million. That may be off. I got to check that. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be checking that for again for tomorrow's show. I kind of pulled it up in the middle here. But um, the Steelers haven't gotten rid of Joe Schobert or restructured his deal. They haven't touched TJ Watts deal. They haven't touched Stephon Tewitt's deal. They haven't touched Cam Hayward's deal. There's 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 restructures and moves that they could they could possibly do, as well as other cuts that they could make to clear out space to make a big move to bring in a, a, a guy who could be a game changer. Adam, do you see a move like that coming? It doesn't have to come tomorrow or Thursday or whenever. I guess tomorrow is Thursday because I'm recording. But you guys get it. We record on Tuesdays for Wednesdays, and I'm all, I'm all messed up. But um, do you see a move like that coming down the line for the Steelers? to kind of get that big player who could be a game changer? See, I don't know. I, I think there's an element of, of what they've done so far where they kind of want to see what they have with other guys when they're put in the correct position, right? Part of part of what part of why Devin Bush and Joe Schobert struggled. And it wasn't all, you know, part of it was on them, but part of it was because there were so many problems, you know, up front that they I were agree. having to account for. And then that kind of even made Minka Fitzpatrick look bad at times. It, it, it trickled backwards of where guys are playing a little bit out of position because, um, you know, the guys in front of them are not in position. And, and I think with Devin Bush and Joe Schobert and guys like that, you know, unless there's a very obvious deal to be made, I think you want to see what those guys, how those guys respond by, by being put in better position. Um, you know, the, the middle linebackers are the people I'd, I'd reference on defense. And then on offense, I think, um, you know, you want to see what you have in in a in a Deontay Johnson and a Chase Claypool when you have a quarterback that might fit with their skill set a little bit better, who can find some time for himself, who can um, you know make things happen downfield a little bit better. Um, you know, are these guys who with a better pairing at quarterback could be more productive? Um, you know, bigger game changing um, players. Can Najee Harris, you know, take a step forward? I think everyone was pleased with him, but his numbers didn't exactly jump off the sheet either does he have potential to kind of start posting those better numbers behind a better line i i think before the steelers make a, a big move like that i think you need to see what you have in the guys you already have in the building um and, and 
you know, if there's an obvious deal to be made this off season, then great, go ahead and do it. Use some of these restructures, use some of your cap space. But I think if you go into 2023, roughly with this team or 2022, with this team roughly as constituted, you find out some things, maybe make a trade around the deadline or in training camp, um, or maybe you just look toward 2023 as your chance to really make that splash, splash play um, you know, in free agency by saying, okay, we're grabbing this guy because we know we have a hole here now. There were no excuses for whether it was Devin Bush or whether it was Chase Claypool, any of these guys. There's no more excuses for those guys. They're out. This guy's in. And, and that's when we're going to start seeing maybe the bigger um, the bigger plays after you see what the, the guys you've already invested pretty heavily in can do with a little bit more depth around them. Right. And, and I feel you on that. And again, this would be more of the pace of Kevin Colbert, you know, being patient, not over, like you said, not over committing yourself to a plan that kind of locks you into something. And I think that's one of the biggest things that the Steelers, when they make these type of moves, they're leaving themselves other avenues to say, and that's what they do with these contracts. They're not front loaded, they're back loaded and they're back loaded with opportunities for the Steelers to get out of them. And, and without, without, with minimal damage to the future salary cap of the organization and, 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 and building the roster down, down the line. But they also give the Steelers the flexibility to say, Hey, you have this amount of money that's coming to you this year. Won't you? Wouldn't you want to maybe extend that a couple more years and spread this out a little bit? But you'll still get paid this amount of money, and that kind of makes things a little more team friendly at times, while also making sure that these guys get paid. It's kind of been the Steeler way, whether it's Omar Khan, Kevin Colbert, Brandon Hunt, who all the people that are in the front office, even though we know Omar Khan is the is the numbers cruncher when it comes to these guys. I, I'm intrigued to see if, if the Steelers stick to that because again, this is a different script. We've we've also seen the Steelers, you know, they're sticking to this script right now. But they have we haven't seen them without Ben Roethlisberger since 20, 2003. So like it's it's been a long time, and this was what everyone's been wondering is if, if that like you said before, they don't they're finding ways how to spend the money that that Ben Roethlisberger has tied up for the past decade and a half or so. So now, can you effectively do that and go get a star that's going to help you either right now or you'll be a guy that that's that's, that's tied tied into the longevity of the team? Um, those are the questions I I, I see uh, people people looking into, and you know I, we're we're still not sure. I, I do think that there's a potential for you know you know I, I maybe a trade. Miles Jack getting released, and I've talked about Miles Jack on this show before. You know, I said that the, the cap number that he had in Jacksonville, that the Jaguars are going to want to unload him. They could have gotten him for a for a for a a, a late round pick uh, there. And now they, they didn't even need a pick because now he's a free agent. and He's added to the market. And so now you're, you're, you're like you were talking about. They want a guy to compare with Devin Bush that can fix things. Maybe they say, you know what, let's evaluate things. Maybe Joe Schobert's fine. Maybe you adjust his contract and you cut him entirely. But there's all these options that are on the table to kind of reshape how you want to be a team, what kind of team you want to be in 2022. That's where I think Kevin Colbert's trying to finalize. Because again, this is his last off season. He said after this draft, he's done. He's trying to find a way to kind of leave open, leave the door open for the next GM, whoever that is, while also giving the Steelers a chance to compete in 2022. Yeah. I mean, that's what the Steelers are all about. They don't tank. Right. And, and that's what this looks like is, is, you know, you're, you're spending to the cap. Um, you're trying to bolster your depth at a lot of different positions and you're trying to do so in a way that allows you to make deals when they present themselves. And, um, you know, I, there were just so many holes on this roster this year. And for us to be sitting here on what today's March 15th, mm -hmm. um, you know, for us to be sitting here having that conversation of already these, these holes seem, seem to have been pretty well filled. And now we're talking about, can you take a, a bigger swing at not just filling a hole, but, but creating an impact. Um, you know, I think that's the next kind of step that this this, this front office is going to have to take is say, okay, you've built the depth. Now that Ben Roethlisberger's gone, what do you do next? And the and the biggest question to me is, is that are we going to see that this year, or is is Kevin Colbert positioning um, the organization to kind of take those bigger swings come twenty twenty three? Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I've said all along, that's what they're positioning themselves at quarterback. I, I definitely think that. I also think that they want to position themselves where if they take a swing on a guy this year, it's a guy who maybe not just isn't just isn't just this year, who might be a guy that they feel is going to be there for the next two, three, four years, um, you know, and a guy that, that helps them in the long run. But again, we just got to see how they continue to, to play things out. We got to see who else gets cut. Uh, you know, Miles Jack being cut 
uh, Tuesday morning. You know, it didn't catch me too off guard because, again, I just saw his contract number. And when I know that, you know, there's a regime change at, at, at the at the coaching spot, I know that, you know, the heavy the heaviest contract contracted guys will often find themselves being sent out of town because they want that those coaches want to reestablish themselves and build their own type of roster. So there's plenty of opportunities out there for the Steelers right now. And there's still trades that can still happen. Like that's the other thing about this that I think people are overlooking, but bottom line is the Steelers are putting themselves in a position that I think opens up the door to focus on in the NFL draft and say, Hey, let's get the guy who's going to be the best impact player for not just this upcoming year, but for the long run. And it is it a Jordan Davis, a Devonte Wyatt, a Devin Lloyd, an Andrew Booth Jr. Maybe they still go offensive line though. I think that's lesser now with the guys that they've signed, you know, Zion Johnson, and Tyler Linderbaum being those two guys we've talked about in the first round. Uh, but it, it, it allows them that freedom. And another thought here, talking about you know, uh, talking to Adam and the last thing I want to ask you about here is with the strong safety position we're talking about Tyron Matthew there's still Terrell Edmonds who's in play he supposedly wants to test the market he's doing that right now I guess the Steelers could probably get him for an inexpensive contract it would be another signing much like these other signings that they've already made probably wouldn't cost them more than six or seven million dollars a year I would estimate and it, he would be a guy that already knows the roster. You're not guessing who he has to be. He already has chemistry with Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka Fitzpatrick wants him back on the team. I, I'm sure Terrell Edmonds wants to get paid, and he feels like he's worth more than that. But this is a tough safety market when guys like Marcus May are getting signed and, and uh, Marcus Williams, who just got signed by the, by the Baltimore Ravens, and Tyron Matthews still out there. That's a tough market for Terrell Edmonds to compete in when he hasn't, he hasn't been an interception machine or a playmaker machine like those guys. Do you think that Terrell Edmonds is a safer bet just to bring in now and, and kind of lock down the strong safety position and then kind of just, again, keep pushing forward like, hey, we're solid at all these positions, but we we could use a playmaker anywhere in the draft? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, not just the draft, but, you know, if someone comes up and, in, in, right. you know, around training camp, some of these we've just mentioned, regardless of where the person comes from, it's about – you have solid pieces. Can you take the next step um, with what's out there? And I think Terrell Edmonds would be a, a pretty solid, um, you know, I don't want to say placeholder, but kind of a placeholder of, of someone who can do the job, maybe isn't a playmaker, but also isn't going to get you, you know, killed. And, and I think that's the thing that after this, this season that there were just so many spots late in the year where you just felt like this team was getting annihilated and looking toward next season, I think you, the hope is that, okay, maybe we're not as great as we'd like to be, and maybe these guys are uninspiring and not sexy, um, but they're fine. And, and Terrell Edmonds, I think, falls in that fine category of, um, you know, someone who's just going to get the job done and and that you're not hopefully going to notice on on every play. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that's kind of the goal here. Um, it's It's getting to that level and then seeing what you can add to that. And I think if you can – you know, if, if things work out the way the Steelers want, I think they're going to be a better team next year than they were this year. Do I think they're going to be competing for the Super Bowl? You know, probably not. Probably, um, yeah. You know, but I think they could be, I think they could enter next season as a solid playoff team as long as things work out at quarterback. And, and I think that's where you want the biggest question mark on this team to be is at quarterback. And you don't want it to be on the other spots. No. Because you've spent that money, you've spent that quarterback money everywhere to else. Fix those exactly to right. fix those other spots, and that's where I see the Steelers having an opportunity here. Um, Adam, we're going to see if the Steelers what happens with Akello Witherspoon is he out of the picture? Uh, what happens with Terrell Edmonds, Tyron Matthew, Bobby Wagner, Miles Jack? All these guys are still out there in free agency, and the tampering period is just two days in. It's been a wild two days of just talking about the NFL and the moves that are being made. We're intrigued to see how the Steelers continue their path into free agency. Adam, thanks so much for joining us here in the Lockdown Steelers podcast. You're always a pleasure to have here and a fun guy to converse with on the Pittsburgh Steelers in the NFL. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Fujimaster24, and, and all my work appears on post-gazette.com. Um, got some March Madness stuff this week. Uh, did some upset picks, a betting guide that, that'll be coming out tomorrow. Um, also got some Steelers stuff, working on some Mitch Trubisky uh, analytics. Um, going to be getting into our weekly draft tracker. What you know, what the mock drafts drafters out there are saying. I think that'll be really interesting after the Trubisky signing because I feel like nationally it's been all about the quarterbacks. Curious been. to see if that changes. So so stay tuned to postgazette.com for that. 
Um, and of course, follow all of our Steelers writers as well. Jerry Dulac, Brian Bacco, Ray Fittipaldo, um, you know, plus all of our great columnists. So there'll be plenty of, of reaction and coverage of, of free agency and kind of looking ahead to the draft in the coming weeks. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam, for joining the show. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. You can find this show, the Locked On Steelers podcast, on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you watch this video on YouTube, hit the like button on it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and all of our channels to get all of our daily content. If you want to help us out, leave us a five-star review with a positive comment, and you'll get a special shout-out at the end of the show. Like this person, John C. Moody, who gives us a five-star review, says, Best Steelers podcast. Thank you, John. I appreciate you. says, Absolutely love this podcast as a diehard Steelers fan from Vancouver. Vancouver, Washington. Whoa! I never really get to hear much news on my Steelers unless it's my local sports radio shows that are bashing on Big Ben. This pod provides great interviews and analysis on my favorite team. Keep it up, Chris, and go Steelers. Thank you, John, for your five-star review, and we appreciate all the people who have given us five-star reviews. we got another one coming tomorrow, so if you want yours read, drop it in the Apple Podcast. Get it to us. Helps us out. Even if you gave one before, always helps to get another one for the Locked On Steelers podcast. Again, I'm Chris Carter with Adam Bittner. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll have Josh Taylor on tomorrow talking about who might have been signed on Wednesday. It's going to be a fun one. We'll see you then on the Locked On Steelers podcast.